Hello, and welcome to this episode of the 5G Factor. I'm Shelley Kramer, the host of this show. And here at the 5G Factor, we explore all things related to 5G and the IoT ecosystems. And today I'm really excited because my guest is Christian Block, and he's the Senior Vice President and GM of RF Front End for Qualcomm. Welcome, Christian. Great to have you today. Hi, nice to see you and nice to meet you. Absolutely. So let me talk you into, if I can, as we get started, to telling us a little bit about your role at Qualcomm and kind of what you and your team focus on. I'd love to know more. Yeah, Shelley, uh, my history in Qualcomm is uh, quite new. I've been coming into Qualcomm five years ago. This was a part of the acquisition of uh, the TDK assets. I have been a leader in the R front end uh, technologies and components in TDK that time, but I saw that this is not going to be a successful story for the future because we have been missing the uh, capability of a system house like Qualcomm is. And um, I was asked by Qualcomm when they acquired the assets of my uh, business, when I came over to run this as a, a general manager from the beginning and build up a business which goes into the direction of multi-billion and uh, to grow this business from a number five to potentially number one. And this with 5G, having the capability of an end-to-end -end solution provider, uh, having the RF front end capabilities with all the component know-how and all the best uh, features, and then combine that with the system. And that's, that was for me a clear challenge. I wanted to take that on. And uh, I, I think this is what uh, happened also then in the last five years. And yeah, maybe you want to explore a bit. That's really exciting. And so five years in, tell us a little bit, uh, if you would, about sort of your life pre-Qualcomm. What, what are some of the things that, that your career path that led you from where you are now, you know, to where you are now? Yeah, I think I, I was always interested to understand the technologies, bring them up. I started as an R&D uh, engineer at the Siemens corporate and many, many years ago in Munich. Yeah. Uh, and uh, had a lot of research in microwave and all these kind of technologies. But what's most important to me is develop not only products, but also ensure that this ends at the customers for a good value and that I make a differentiation. And that started with cordless phone filters. This went into mobile phone filters. Then at first uh, time ended in mobile phone modules. Uh, our biggest customer that time was Nokia. We were leading there. So with that move, I really went through all the generations from 2, 3G to 3G and then 4G. But as I said before, I saw an end coming that I cannot really bring further differentiation as a standalone component guy. I, I've been always looking here to ensure that the customer is happy and gets the best products and the best performance. But I saw a limitation here. That, that was my career before. Already 30 years now in total since I'm in Qualcomm in the industry. So I would say I've been seeing all the all the cycles in mobile from the beginning when the first cordless phones happened and also mobile phones. And I think uh, I made the whole transition to, to smartphones. That's really interesting. I, I will say that I think there's, um, you know, I'm a big fan of, of having a job and a career where I get up every day excited about what it is I get to do and who it is I get to work with and interact with and and the goal of making things better for customers, using technology to make life in general better. Um, I feel like that's what I get to spend my life doing. And it's clear that's what you've spent your career doing. So that's really an interesting backstory. So now I want to talk a little bit about RF front end, front end technology, and we're going to refer to that from now on as RFFE. So why is RFFE essential to 5G ecosystem product development and innovation? Yeah, the handset capabilities uh, which we need here is our, our front end that you need the components tailored to the system. So as I have been before, a component maker, I just work, work to the spec and then you got something okay. But you want to really optimize uh, the phone in the right way. You have to tailor the components. You have to understand how you uh, drive the power amplifier, how do you drive the power tracking, and how you drive the antenna tuners and the filtering. So really orchestrated by the modem to antenna, you come to a system solution which makes a big difference and makes you really enjoying all the advantages I talked about, high data throughput, low size, efficient right. cost. So that's a critical one. 
That's awesome. <clears throat> Some things that users may not even notice, but things that we actually expect today, right? Yes, correct. Absolutely. So tell me a little bit about, you know, where you see Qualcomm Technologies RFFE position now and, and how you see the differentiation in the market. Yeah, when I started, uh, we were clearly the number five, so low, low uh, uh, newcomer uh, with right. a few hundred million uh, revenues. But with our vision of going to 5G and already being preparing for that, we were able to run our own ecosystem, really more than two antenna. And with having then the RF front end components always tailored, as I said before, but also always using the best technologies to have really the best performance, uh, that made us within five years to be the number one in the mobile space. So in the mobile handsets, we are clearly the number one meanwhile, and we have right. been uh, only one uh, 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 task now uh, that we want to defend this position here, not only, but go also forward. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, from number five to number one is no small accomplishment, Christian. No, it's five years. I think so, yeah. <laughs> I'll take it. Uh, you know, I I, uh, <clears throat> I tell my teenagers all the time that I rarely ask a question that I don't already know the answer to. Um, and I believe I know the answer to this question. I'm going to ask it to you anyway. So what about moving forward? Do you, you know, we've talked about Qualcomm's differentiation in the market. What about moving forward? Do you expect that to change? Not change in the strategy. So we want to yeah. go and continue to make it. Uh, if you are successful, why you ch should change that? A Absolutely. winning team and a winning strategy should never change. But there is a part of the strategy which we uh, had in mind from the beginning, but we have not been executing that. This part, the first part of the strategy was really grow quickly, give all the value to the mobile or 5G, so in the mobile phones and in this industry to give the advantage. But having the strategy and showing that end-to-end -end makes a difference, there's other industries and other uh, segments we can really serve. And this is automotive, IoT, connectivity. And that's where the area is where we can still further grow and where we can bring even more value to the industry and to the customers. Yeah, I think there's lots of opportunities there. And on that front, let's talk about some market prospects for Qualcomm Technologies RFFV. Um, what are you thinking? Uh, so, yes, I, I think I, uh, the situation is very clear. We have been just successfully uh, launching the first products for our next generation of connectivity, going to Wi-Fi 6E and then to Wi-Fi 7. This will bring another end-to-end -end advantage. So we use, again, our modem uh, to antenna capabilities, and we are launching our new Wi-Fi FAM modules uh, combined with our excellent filter capability. And that makes a huge difference. So we think that's a very growing uh, area for us now, which we think uh, we have a differentiation others may not have yet. I think that's awesome. So one of the segments that I'm most interested in is, is the automotive sector. And I know Qualcomm's made some exciting and significant inroads there. Let's talk, if we would, for a minute about advancements in 5G for the automotive sector and what role you see Qualcomm's um, RFFE portfolio playing there. Also here, the same the same uh, uh, strategy again. Yeah. Successful strategy is do the end to end advantage. But for sure, the environment in automotive is a different one. It's right. more complex. It is also different temperatures. You have to be uh, aware of that. So all the reliability conditions are different ones. So have to adapt a little bit the technologies that you bring the success. For sure, the complexity is the same, and we like uh, we really like the complexity to make the difference here. So we are not afraid of complexity. We think that complexity brings us uh, really value. Uh, the difference is a little bit that uh, if you think of a mobile phone, then you go really globally with all the uh, different frequencies in different countries. In uh, automotive, for sure, you will be more uh, locally. So it's clear you have to focus then on the countries where you are in Europe or US and so on. This is a little different, but the complexity which you have to cover here and also all the technology you have to develop here, especially in packaging, uh, which is very critical so that you have a long uh, lifetime reliability. You don't want to have an issue there. That's that's a big one. And this is really the complexity we uh, we drive and where we also have a lot of designments now. So our pipeline, automotive pipeline, also for our fund is quite loaded. And uh, we see really success now uh, uh, again, again across the whole uh, uh, potential customers. 
Yeah, I think so too. Very exciting times ahead for sure. What about the IoT sector? Let's talk about some opportunities you might see there. Uh, so IoT is a very important segment for us as well. Right. Let's be clear, uh, Shelley, you at home, I'm at home. So we want to have also connection here at home. If you are here with a, a new Wi-Fi, it's not only that you want to have this in your mobile phone. So you want to have that also uh, capability at home and you want to have fast data connections. You want to be connected. You want to have your meetings without any disruptions. You want to still uh, stream your movies. You want to do everything. That's very critical that the, the uh, infrastructure at your home is, is grading, uh, upgraded. And that's one area. And for sure, if I think then on the broader infrastructure, serving also then the, uh, the infrastructure which brings you the frequencies is also important. So there's a lot of elements here where our technology can make a difference again, if it's in the Wi-Fi space or in the mobile space. But important is also, now we have to talk about coexistence in, in the future. So it's not only that you have Wi-Fi alone, you want to have the cellular uh, uh, co uh, coexistence at the same time. So this drives complexity again. Then you have uh, the capability that you can roam mobile and uh, Wi-Fi in the same area. Right. Absolutely. You know, I think about modems as sort of the invisible thing <laughs> that drives everything. And if and and also, you know, security is a huge part of modem functionality, right? But you know, modems. Most of us don't think about where that modem is tucked away that is providing everything we need. But it is incredibly important. So, absolutely, I'd love to know more if you will indulge me about the third gen expansion of the Wi-Fi front end module. How does this portfolio differentiate Qualcomm Technologies RFFE solutions? There's a lot of elements here which will make a change. Yeah. <laughs> and one of the changes is that you will see a nice upgrade in data speed, a huge, I have to say. That's very important that you have that. We see, for example, uh, less than uh, two milliseconds of latency. You see 50% of uh, lower than a previous generation in, in terms of power. So that's also important. That's, yeah. that's, there's a lot of savings which is necessary. And remember, we talk all about energy and energy saving. And uh, right. if you have that in, in your environment, in the phones or in the, in the infrastructure, and you have huge power savings, that's a lot to, uh, of talk what we see here now. And that makes uh, 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 the customer thrilled. And, and I think they cannot wait to go more quickly to uh, uh, Wi-Fi 7 uh, as they start now with 6C. So I see really the, the, the story here that we can make a huge differentiation here. And for sure, um, as I said before, we have the capability also to have the coexistence with, with a mobile phone. So we can have an existence, a coexistence here with a 5G uh, sub-6 uh, together with a Wi-Fi. Well, and combine that with energy savings, it's a no-brainer, right? It's a win all the way around. Yes, all right. <laughs> so, so can you elaborate for me a little on the importance of Qualcomm performing filter technology for these um, Wi-Fi front-end modules? Yeah, that's cr a critical one, and I, uh, I like this question because we had a lot of discussions with our customers uh, how critical the uh, filter technologies is. And that has been a big, big uh, effort in the last few years to bring up all the technologies. And I would say Qualcomm is a company who has the broadest portfolio in filter technology and in a leading form, I have to say. Many guys have filter technology, but in a leading form that you have lowest insertion loss, highest uh, uh, iteration, so that you have the best filter uh, functionality for all the frequencies from really like 600 megahertz up to uh, seven gigahertz. This is what we are. And for this, we have been developing filter technologies. One is, this is called QSAW which we use for everything below three gigahertz. And then we have been developing our new QBOR, which makes a differentiation for the higher frequencies. And these kind of two technologies are key enabler in this environment. This makes it really that we can run uh, certain things concurrently, which has not been possible before. Absolutely, very interesting. So I wanna talk a little bit about the future. Um, you know, I know that Qualcomm is all about innovation and diversification and taking on big challenges and solving big problems. How do you see Qualcomm defining success over the next year or the next couple of years? 
yeah, I have some visions here I'm working on, um, and I think that our our story will take long for sure. This is not a, a short story. I, I at least I have a envision in the next five years for sure. What comes beyond? Uh, there's ideas, but I have the vision that we really have so many things to be done uh, in this in this space of not only 5G. I see us already digging into what has to be done in 6G. So yeah. you can imagine uh, such a development takes a lot of time. Uh, many people talked about 4G and what 4G can still bring. While we already have been starting to work on 5G well ahead, that's right. very critical. Uh, Qualcomm is a company, as you may know, with a lot of uh, innovation generating IP like mm -hmm. nobody. We start really with these new technologies 10 years ahead. Uh, can you imagine 10 to 5 years ahead yeah. when you see first time products? Uh, all the R&D engineering is already busy. And we do that also in all the elements of the RF frontend already. And we want to be prepared the first one to drive 6G. When everything is clear, which is the final uh, uh, standards, what is the right frequencies, uh, we want to be impressive to the world that we, again, we are the first one to be ready. Uh, I think there's never anything wrong with being the first one to be ready, right? Yeah. Okay, Christian Block, here's one for you. If you were to leave our audience with just one final thought about the RFFE market and what, it's, what is important to be thinking about, what would that be? I have to say that there is a clear thing what drives me uh, every night and day, what should be done in the future. And what I'm thinking is we have to do more to connect even more people to convenience. What I see in the next years to come, I see more and more people getting for sure older, need also connection, need a good life. And I'm thinking of what we, can we do here to make their life even better. And that what can here 5G do, 6G do, or what can new technology like sensors or all these things can do to make the life of, of all the people better. So that's a critical one, which is in my mind. So you must know, first I think, think of, what the technology could be good for, also the R front end. And then I think about that, how to make that happen. Absolutely, absolutely. So have a vision, <laughs> yes. right? Have a vision, work on a strategy, tap the right partners to work with, to bring that vision to life. And um, I, I've spent my life as a strategist. So that's always how I think about next and, steps and forward, a, right? That's the best way uh, to have a, you have a team, a big team of 5,000 people yeah. with a lot of engineers. If you give them the vision where to go, they run for life. They really do what yeah. they do. If you have them believing what you're doing and they see then shortly after all the times of success, that is uh, then also the right mentality which you need uh, to really impress the world. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Vision, strategy, and a bunch of smart people dedicated to making great things happen, right? That's that's the magic equation for success. Well, Christian Block, thank you so much for spending time with me today. I very much look forward to watching Qualcomm Technologies and RFFE's role in 5G ecosystem product development and innovation and all and 6G and 7G and all the things that are ahead. And I will very much be keeping my eye on you and your team and looking for great things ahead. Uh, Shelly, thank you so much that I had the opportunity to share my thoughts. And yeah, it would be good to see you again. And let me uh, let us talk in a few years where we are. I'm pretty sure uh, we have been moving a lot and uh, would be nice to talk again. Absolutely. And you know what? I can promise you we won't wait three years. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. And thank to you. our listening audience, thank you so much for joining us. And that is a wrap for this show. We'll see you next time. See you. Thank you. Bye.